chess is a very tough game we all know about it but we constantly get reminded of it through games of top gms at the super bet grand chess tour classic uh, anish giri was playing against constantin lupulescu here are a few pictures before we get going this is anish preparing for the game lupulescu is a romanian grandmaster rated 2656 very strong but when you compare him with anish giri well anish is much more experienced and stronger than him however uh, when the game started it turned into something very interesting let's go over the game anish is playing with the black pieces lupulescu opens with c4 e5 knight to c3 knight f6 knight f3 knight c6 so four knights in the english e3 bishop b4 and now queen to c2 here it's very interesting how black plays black takes on c3 and black says that i am giving up my bishop for your knight generally this is not a great idea because bishops are considered slightly stronger than the knights but the knight was controlling a very important square on d5 and so after queen e7 what's important is what's left on the board here it seems as if white is not able to develop easily black has easy play with d5 and then he gets his bishop out and uh, castles and he seems to have a very easy position okay lupulescu was prepared he goes d4 another main move is a3 with the idea of playing b4 and bishop b2 okay d4 knight e4 and now queen to d3 the queen moves to d3 attacks the knight and uh, anish takes on d4 here well there was also possible it was also possible to give a check on b4 but it's not a good idea because after knight d2 takes bishop takes queen takes b2 and bishop c3 white is doing very well you know d5 queen d2 he has all the trumps in the position so ed4 knight takes knight c5 and this has been played before not in many games but in a couple of games and uh, it seems to be around equal queen takes d4 castles bishop e2 and here uh, anish played the move b6 let's take stock of the situation here what's happening white has the bishop pair okay a beautiful structure i love these structures where you have the semi open uh, d file and uh, pawn structure like this it's very easy to play you know you put your bishop here you put one rook on c1 the other on d1 and it looks like a very very nice position to play but there is a problem here and i can explain to you this point very well if we go to a line of budapest now keep this position in mind okay let's go to budapest gambit and a very popular line goes like this queen e7 and it's also a trap because if you take the bishop here or on the next move knight d3 is a smothered mate so take take e3 takes queen d2 and you will see that b6 it is kind of similar okay the knight is on uh, c5 in anish's game but the big difference big difference is that this bishop is not on f4 it is back on c1 and this huge difference is the reason why black is having good chances there and here it's a one-sided position you know e4 f3 and white is totally better in this position but in our game where we saw after castles bishop b7 now if i just try to play like b3 which is the most natural move then f5 bishop b2 now queen g5 suddenly you have pressure here how to defend against the mate that is there and then you have to play f3 then my rook swoops over putting pressure here and all of a sudden you are not able to you know uh, 
coordinate your pieces your bishop on b2 is not defending e3 e3 is weak so that's the reason why it was much more uh, anish went into this position and felt that he has good chances f3 by lupulescu a5 cementing his knight on c5 bishop d2 and now f5 already start liking black's position you know it's much easier to play he plays d6 brings his other rook in rook f2 rook f6 rook lift rook is coming this way to g6 or h6 bishop d3 queen f7 rook e2 and now this was not a great move by lupulescu he should have just waited here maybe bishop c2 but rook e2 actually starts creating tactics it's very interesting and anish instantly spots it queen h5 now the point is that rook h6 is a big threat but also look at this this is going to be trouble because the knight will jump to e4 and after fe fe this rook which is protected by the bishop will be in trouble bishop e1 and here I think there was this moment where Anish should have grabbed his chance. Uh, it was a very interesting moment. I would like you to pause the video and think what should black play. Okay, so the right move here, rook h6 threatens a mate. But of course, Lupulescu's last move was aimed at that, didn't he? But now is a move which is very powerful. And I think Anish kind of underestimated this knight e4 firstly you want to take this bishop because it's protecting the key pawn but if white were to take and also if bishop f4 there is g5 and if you play takes i take back now the e d3 bishop cannot move because this rook is hanging and well it's just gone if bishop f4 is a nice try by the way because if you play ed3, there is bishop h6 with a mate. So you cannot let that happen. You first simply uh, play rook g6 and black is better here because he's going to recover his material and with a great position. But instead of going rook h6 and knight e4, which, I'm, which would have been very strong, Anish went bishop e4. He found that this move is better, but Lupulescu defended very staunchly here he went back bishop b1 good move and now after rook uh, h6 it's already a blunder white to play and win can you find the move g4 excellent if you found this hg g3 and you can exchange the queens and it's winning g4 was a very nice move uh, because the rook defends on h2 rook g6 was played by anish and now the bishop came here. Suddenly black's position is not as great. Anish had to take. Take. And now knight e4. If you see the, how the game has progressed until this point, you will realize that it's black who's been putting pressure, white who's been defending. But objectively here, after queen d5 check, good move by the way, because if you would have first taken, taken and then played a check, then the queen's path to f7 is not blocked by the rook. And so after queen f7, black is simply a pawn up. But here, after first queen d5 check, king has to go to h8 and there are back rank issues. Rook g3. And so when we look at such a position through the eyes of Anish Giri, it's clear that he wants to win this game. Because he's been pressing, he has had these ideas of knight e4, bishop e4 in the position. So he is looking for a win but Lupulescu simply plays his pawn to e4 reminding black that look your back rank is weak now Anish if he was in a right mind frame and he was given this position fresh he might have made a move like h6 and said okay fine you know let's go into a end game maybe I'll, I'll not go into a rook end game I'll play here it seems around even but I have my chances let's see but he went in queen f3 not a bad move but after queen f7, now threatening a back rank mate, rook has to move, e takes f5, suddenly things are getting tricky because black's rook is now pa passive, 
there are ideas of rook e8 of course you have to check for your mate on g2 but also f6 in the position all this starts becoming a little bit messed up and in your mind as anish giri you are still thinking oh i should win and rupulescu suddenly starting to feel confident you see how the dynamics of a game change queen goes back to c6 because once again you know rook g5 might have been objectively safer queen c7 you take here but then your d6 is weak and b6 is falling and a5 would get weak and you're like no 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 but i was better before so let me just try to save my pawn now a good move by lupulescu rook f2 because this rook now defends this pawn and this rook is free to whenever he wants to enter the position now here anish started to get a bit worried because rook e7 is a big threat and also f6 is a threat just to give you an idea let's say i play a4 rook e7 ad and i was thinking of f6 here things are getting very very complicated take i was also analyzing this one takes f7 but the problem is this time the queen is controlling the e8 square for now and you can't really win black wins this so not sacrificing here but you may have to take back the pawn and uh, black can just go back to g6 and try to defend this position it's around even so let's say a b3 i take back on b3 this is also another way to play then after queen a8 I, I feel like here white is the one who is on the offensive black has to find many many accurate moves in order to hold but somehow he can still cling on here something like this and black is doing still in the game but anish actually lost his sense of objectivity here he went queen c5 and he had a one move trick here which was that if rookie eight he had something in mind can you find it black to play yes rook g2 it seems like there's a back rank made there but rook g2 you can't take with the rook it's pinned if you take with the king there is queen c6 check and i pick up the rook so white has to go king h1 very interesting variation and then i go rook h2 and now you must take queen f2 king h1 and it's a drop here perpetual so that was his idea but lupulescu now you know he's also a great player he says now is my chance to beat anish rookie seven and he tells black yes you are pawn up but your pieces are passive and c7 oops your pieces are passive here on uh, g8 and c7 is hanging f6 is coming and anish now got really worried because f6 is a big threat in the position uh, and so he went over here queen d4 just to give you an idea of what was hanging in the air let's say a4 was played then f6 and now you can't push the pawn h7 is a mate so you have to let's say you play a b3 just so that you know what's happening and now white to play and win can you find it take check and it's all over rookie eight check coming next it's a mate so here after rook e7 queen d4 was played and there came the move rook e8 this time not f6 but rook e8 because to f6 once again anish had got it covered black to play and hold take take g f6 the rook activates itself king f1 it's a pretty may a pretty draw here rook e1 check rook e e2 if rook f e2 then it's already over uh, there is a mate in three check and it's gone rook g2 coming next but you, you could play rook e2 and then after queen d1 there is rook e1 so queen d4 rook e8 now he took but this time it doesn't work because after check few checks here check rook d2 it was all over the checks will soon run out let's say after queen g3 king d1 the king will run away to safety and anish had to resign the game 
it is very very interesting to see how the dynamics changed how anish was better then went into a losing position how lupulescu got back his confidence and also there were some very nice pictures that were captured by uh, lenart utis who is a fantastic photographer who makes these grand chess tours very very exciting with his lens uh, look at this one anish totally uh, dejected at what he has done in the position lupulescu after the win he was like what i did i just beat anish giri uh, of course after the game you are all already thinking what happened and all of that that's, that's the look on his face and here is the look of a man who has beaten a world class gm i hope you enjoyed this analysis uh, this is sagar shah signing off bye bye